Thank you and good afternoon to everyone and welcome once again to the capstone showcase on leveraging digitalization for transformation. I'm Chi Xiong and with me on the panel will be my guest speaker, Alfred Jacobs and Alex. In today's world, digital is becoming the new normal. Every business will become a digital business in time to come. Every other day, you will see no less than one article talking about digital and digitalization. Just yesterday, Straits Times was talking about this uh, digital Go platform that is offered by the Indonesia um, uh, startup, which allow uh, commoners to trade Go in small quantity. So you can imagine how this is going to disrupt the way Go trading business will be. We often heard about Industry 4.0. And Singapore's strategy towards Industry 4.0 is our Smart Nation strategy. Smart Nation will fundamentally change the way we work, we live, and we relate to one another. Digital transformation is here to stay. But what we see is not every company and not every sector and business are in Industry 4.0. Many companies are transforming themselves and trying to become the Industry 4.0 or a smart company. So what we'd like to share today is to take you through how one traditional company become, transform itself to become a digital business. And just to highlight, what enabling technology and data is core towards digital transformation. What is more crucial is also the leadership, the leadership to drive transformation. As we always say, it's technology enabled and always people led. These are some learning outcomes I hope you will take away from this session. Hopefully, you will understand what the strategy adopted by this company that will transform itself from a brick and mortar business to one that is digital. And look at the business value chain, how it shifted from one that is supply driven to one that is customer oriented, customer driven. And thirdly, how digitalization extends the current business model. And last but not least, what are some of the leadership lessons take away during the transformation journey? Without further ado, let me introduce the subsequent speakers. They are all proud ISS alumni from the MTech Digital Leadership Program. I have Mr. Jacob Swong, Regional IT Manager of Gross Packard, Gross Packard Schumich, develops, produce, and market machine needles, precision parts, precision tools, and systems for textile industry. I also have Alfred Tam, Associate Di Director for Digital Transformation with Singtel. And we know all those Singtel, and we love Singtel. Finally, I have Alexandra Ang, Vice President Global Technology with L. Carterton. L. Carterton is an American private equity company based in Greenwich, Connecticut, with over US 15 billion of equity capital assets across six fund strategies. Let's welcome Jacobs. Over to you, please. Thank you, Jishong. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jacob Wong. Together with Alfred Tam and Alexander Ang, the three of us will take you through Schmidt's digital transformation and how this strategy was conceptualized. A little bit about Schmitz. It was founded in 1851 in Germany. The HQ is currently in Nelbstadt and it employs over 688 employees and has a broad portfolio of sewing and thrifting needles that are manufactured in Germany, Switzerland, as well as India. And perhaps what is truly representative of Schmitz, besides having a strong heritage, is its hallmark of quality. Top-notch sewing needles, they are known to every generation. This is currently the business model. Schmitz has proprietary manufacturing capabilities and they sell needles worldwide through dealers and distributors. These dealers and distributors would then sell it to another layer of dealers and distributors to another layer before reaching the consumers. And this is currently the situation. Like many businesses, Schmitz faces fierce competition. 
There are literally thousands of needle brands with different quality as well as the different price range. And today, Shumets only sells needles. If that stops, then the revenue stops. And stagnant growth has been there for quite some time. And on top of this, needles has been existing for a really long time. It is quite amazing that since ancient times until now, the profile of the needles remain largely unchanged, with the exception of different materials used and different coatings. Many ideas have been tried and tested by different people during different periods to improve the needles. And the margins are thin. So we started off with making sense of the situation, where we are now as a company. If you don't do this, then it is difficult for you to know the reason why you may have to transform or if there's even a need for you to transform in the first place. And we do this by starting with engaging the stakeholders, both internally as well as externally. For this project, we actually found out that the consumers themselves don't necessarily know the importance of changing sewing needles, whereas on the other hand, um, the company is trying to sell more needles. Next. We scan the business environment using various frameworks such as Porter's Five Forces as well as Pester. It is important to know why the business trend will affect your business. Yeah. Has your customer expectation changed? Has what they value changed? And in this project, we discovered that what the business was focusing on the past does not necessarily lead on to the motivations of the customer. And in this course, we'll be taught different framework to scan the business environment. And next, taking the customer pain points and the customer desires, we brainstorm different ideas with the stakeholders. It is important to involve them early so that you get less resistance later on. This Cycle itself is iterative, and we conducted the service design workshop throughout the project for this. And when you are doing brainstorming, try to remember this, create as many ideas as possible. Try not to uh, judge the ideas because there will be another separate process where you can evaluate those ideas. Go for extreme ideas and try to build ideas on top of one another. And many a times we discover that good ideas comes about building on top of ideas of somebody else. Only one person speak at one time and most importantly, have fun. I certainly enjoy this activity the most. And with the brainstorm ideas, we filter, uh, we use three selection criteria to filter into our new solution proposition. The first is how unique is this idea? How easily is this idea being copied by the competitor? How fast can you realize this idea? And what are the links to the current competencies? And in this leadership course, you'll be taught different frameworks to evaluate uh, different uh, your business ideas. As with many businesses, they are always thinking about how can they get closer to the customers? And that was also our key consideration. This slide is a smartphone penetration rate that was extracted from Wikipedia just last year. In it, 76% in, <coughs> of the people in the advanced economies owns a smartphone. And in the emerging economies, 45%. Now, make a guess. Where is Singapore? According to Statista, Singapore is right at the top. If most of us will own two or more devices if we consider tablets, right? So if you can recall, this is currently the business model of Schmitz. Yeah, They sell needles to dealers and distributors and they sell to another layer before reaching the consumers. What if, what if we could now go directly to the customer 
through the mobile phone. And in doing so, we will get closer to the customers. Instead of the consumers making a trip down to the retail store, asking advice and, and getting needles, we now bring Schmitz right into the household of the service. Introducing Schmitz Digital Atelier, the one-stop shop for Soe's end-to-end sewing journey. Instead of calling up their friends, they can now share their projects in popular social medias. Instead of getting lost in the searches of internet with a lot of articles and perhaps even confused by the salesman, they can now have direct access to Schmidt's knowledge base. And never again will they have difficulty trying to get Schmidt's needles through Schmidt's marketplace. So let's do a recap. We started off with trying to find out where we are now as a company. We scanned the business environment to find out what is the dominant trend. And we understood and discovered the customer's expectations. And together with the new vision of becoming a global provider for sewing needs, we take all of this together to form our new digital offerings. And now I will pass the stage to Alfred. Thank you, Jacob. Um, now I shall take you through the section on understanding how digitalization extends traditional business model. Transforming a business model is a high stake ambition. My team is fully aware as we construct our digitalization strategy, crafting levers that hinges on three key aspects. Operational excellence that encompass core business process optimization. Customer experience with an outside in view. And data exploitation by turning data from byproducts into valuable assets. These are not just key characteristics of digital organization, but are powerful defining forces that can shape the outcome of digitalization. More importantly, these forces enable business model transformation, which is disruptive within the organization, but not destructive with a strong digital core. What is truly formidable about a transformed business model is the potential to disrupt market players and across industries. Therefore, my team believed and worked on extending the business model with digitalization as a truly enduring and strategic advantage. With this in mind, my team examined Schmidt's business model closely, starting from the customer perspective. Can we start, can we ask ourselves, we ask ourselves if our customer segments can also include customers' customers? For customer relationships, can we include direct and mass personalization. Also, can we extend brick and mortar stores to online to create a seamless experience? And to not only consider high quality products as a value proposition, but to focus on the experience journey. Now to support and realize this, we need to ask ourselves, what and who are the new partners we need to consider onboarding? And should our key activities include social media engagements and how we could use data better in the form of online sentiment analysis to inform our key processes and drive continuous improvements. My team also challenged the conventional cost model. Must we be the only ones paying? Can we co-pay with partners to defray costs for our customers? And last but not least, how can we expand and add revenue streams to improve our top and bottom line? Through our extensive engagement, stakeholder engagement, 
and research into nine business model elements, my team synthesized the inputs from various perspectives, analyzed the business data and macroeconomic conditions to set a bold vision by incorporating these possibilities in our digitalization strategy. Effectively forging formidable thrusts in the new business model that would dramatically move the needle. As mentioned earlier, we challenge our value proposition to move beyond just high quality products. Therefore, we chose to illustrate that shift with a relatable customer journey. Before embarking on the digitalization journey, the classic journey to will be to travel to a physical store to browse, inquire, and buy, which might be confusing to some because of the conflicting information, most likely between a human salesperson and everyone's favorite Dr. Google. So for the average consumer, you may end up not getting what they want, discouraged and disappointed. The high touch and high friction classic journey is certainly undesirable to say the least. But what is worse, worse is the missed opportunity to, to build a lasting customer relationship right from the get-go. By latching on to digitalization, we could elevate the sewing and craft making experience by putting the store digitally in the palm of our customers. A portal to a wealth of information, advices, and tips directly from our experts. As well as convenient access to the entire portfolio of products and services at their fingertips. 24 by seven, while in the comfort of their homes, offering a stress-free and frictionless customer experience. Now let us take a step back and look at how digitalization has extended our business model and what it truly means to businesses and your organizations. First, additional customer segments would open doors to more sales and customer engagement opportunities. Next, touch points are no longer constrained by physical locations and presence. Therefore, the addressable market will be significantly larger. Third, businesses could gain new revenue streams and or accelerate revenue, revenue growth with digital services, fees, commissions, and advertisements. But at the pinnacle of a robust digitalization push, the most lasting and powerful outcomes are the strategic strategy assets that businesses will acquire as they navigate through their digitalization journey. The know-how in capitalizing these hard-earned assets will not only sustain long-term long growth, but put themselves in a prime position to thrive in an ever-increasing competitive landscape and to overcome even more disruptive challenges in the future. Now, having shared the rewarding outcomes in the last few minutes, I would like to rebalance with a pragmatic view. As I come to, my end, come to the end of my segment, we are well aware that changing or extending a business model is risky. Therefore, any attempt in doing so must be carefully considered, planned and executed. Even as we see growth as a result, we must still discern between merely a digital facade versus an organization that is digitally transformed to the core. Therefore, with the right digital leadership helming your digitalization strategy, the battle is considered won in putting a struggling business on the trajectory of hyper growth. With this said, I would like to hand the stage over to my teammate, Alex. Yeah, thank you, Alfred. So um, after listening to what both Jacob and Alfred have shared, uh, I hope you have gained some prelude on what we have undergone during the ten tenure of our course. What we have undergone during the, uh, how we have applied the various digital models from what we have learned um, into an organization to give them a landscape of the external forces uh, and a proposal to steer them to a new way of doing business. What kind of shift are we referring to? I will share with you in the coming slides. Before we deep dive into the strategy, we first need to explain what we have learned and undergone. 
there will be a mindset shift regarding to what we have known or thought we know. When we hear digital transformation, what sprung up? Digital or technology, yes. I bet that is in most of us, uh, our, on our minds. But through our research, is that the case? Um, through our interaction with various stakeholders, we learn that technology is just an enabler. And transformation is more than just that. Digital transformation involves different business units uh, that have to be synergized to achieve the ultimate goal. So it's a business journey having a bold change in how an organization delivers value by understanding the forces that shape the digital economy. So what and what else is required? Uh, in, before we deep dive, I mean, and any businesses cannot do without their customers. When the customer is happy, so will it be the business. Solve their problems and improve their lives. Design with the customer at the center of all processes. How do we do that? Perform engagement and solicit feedback directly from them. Then, what should businesses take note of when embarking on transformation? Breaking resistance. Start by listening. Conduct both internal and external research. Re-evaluate and involve everyone. You may be surprised that the frontliners actually know more than what businesses thought they already know. This will make their buy-in more likely because you involve them in the decision-making process. Next, we have to understand the importance to communicate our vision or strategy in less than two minutes and remove any, corporate, any form of corporate speak. Why so? Be transparent. A clear vision or strategy helps people become aware of what is going to happen next. This will naturally find, they will naturally find ways to overcome it. And this is what makes us all human. So digital transformation may involve business overhaul, but don't try to do everything at the same time. Start small, test and learn. Fail fast, learn fast and fail forward. Don't overthink, don't overdo. There are needed risks involved. However, the rewards can be fulfilling. Okay, with that said, uh, before I end my part, I would like to share a famous quote from Albert Einstein. So we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used to create them. Businesses today must adapt their way of doing businesses to the reality of how people think, feel and act in this. Businesses must revamp. So, um, so if this is what we have learned throughout our two years. If you are keen to know more about the course, um, this is what it is. All in all, this course helped us to make you a better leader in all aspects. With that said, I will hand the stage back to Chi Xiong to conclude. Thank you very much, Alex. Okay, so what you have heard is the Capstone team uh, sharing their project and they have all just graduated from uh, this year's batch of Masters of uh, Technology in Digital Leadership. Uh, the Capstone is really the highlight of the two-year program where the teams will be formed to apply what they have learned through the nine courses that they have undertaken in the program to a real world uh, organization and solving a real world business problem. So Shoemix is a real company and the digital transformation strategy that uh, they have just uh, uh, shared with you is something that they have uh, come up with and they will implement uh, over the next uh, one, two years. So if you like what you have heard and is keen to join the next intake of the program. The application for the 2021 MTech leadership uh, program is now open. It's the newest MTech uh, offered by ISS and focus on digital transformation strategy and leadership. You can scan the QR code uh, for more information from our ISS website. You can also sign up for a info session that's coming up later in August. Or alternatively, you could also sign up for a one-on-one -on -one consultation session with myself if you have specific uh, questions regarding uh, the program. While we're waiting for the stage to be set up, uh, perhaps uh, I will allow you one, two minutes or so to put out questions 
onto the Zoom Q&A uh, so that uh, we can uh, try to address as many of these questions as you may have uh, during our Q&A. Okay, we're back. Uh, let me once again uh, welcome my guests, Jacobs, Alfred, Alex. Okay, let's see uh, what questions do we have here. Oh, I see there are some questions from my current class of uh, <laughs> uh, students. Okay, let's take this one. Um, is digitalization and digitization one and all the same? Should I uh, get uh, my guest to share? Um, digitization, this one, uh, one Digitalization and, and digitization is uh, actually not the same. Right? One refers to the process of translating uh, something manually to something of a digital nature. The other is embalming the, uh, the business itself uh, and the process of integrating into it to form uh, a solution. So by itself, both of them are uh, in a way distinctively different. Alfred, you have anything to yeah, add? On? I, I thought maybe uh, I would like to add that um, in a, in a, maybe in a, a short with a shorter response is that um, digitalization I, I will call I will, in comparison uh, in relative uh, terms right you it's actually a higher order than digitization um, so I, I would say the the but both uh, both actually. Uh, uh, work together hand in hand. Uh, you probably the first order of things will be to start with digitization first, then moving on to digitalization, which is a higher order. Yeah, that's the short response I have. Alex, um, I think it's more on how we change the processes rather than just trying to adapt to from a traditional man manner to a digital state. So the process of doing the whole thing encompasses both of it hand in hand. So I think that is how I will share, I mean, where I see it from. Um, there's a question on the, um, what, would, what were the people challenges in the digital transformation and how can this uh, be overcome? Uh, maybe I can refer that to Alex. I think you do share a few uh, pointers earlier on during your... Yeah. Uh, uh, presentation. Yeah. So du during our uh, initial phase, initially, you know, as we embark on our project and all, we thought of, I mean, since we are, all, the three of us all come from a solid background of IT, right? So we thought of coming up with proposal and stuff like that. But uh, the moment we came up with some set, set of uh, what we are trying to do or what we are trying to achieve, we bring it down to the ground, then we realize we are all off. Um, people from the ground actually has a lot of resistance. They don't know what we are trying to do. Um, to a point where they try to start questioning, is it necessary? They can see some elements of goodness in it, but at the end, of, at, the, at the same time, they don't understand what we are trying to portray. So what we, the, the resistance is, uh, how we overcome the resistance at the end of the day is, we try to work with them, understand what is required, what needs to be fixed, how can we say in such a manner where people actually understand what we are trying to do. It, so for instance, we want to say, uh, this product actually can do scanning, for instance. But right now you tell people this product actually helps you to do this by doing scanning. So the way you face it also matters. And uh, the way you face it actually help people understand better. And at the same time, the resistance will all fall off. So uh, at the end of the day, I would like to say, I will sum it up, it's if you know, I mean, as long as you work with people, people understand what you're trying to achieve, the buying gets a lot easier. So that, that, yeah, so yeah. So talking about uh, phrasing, right, uh, Jacobs, uh, Sumix is a German company. Uh, and we know it's a very successful uh, traditional company. So uh, what are some of the takeaways when it comes to managing uh, Germans and the, the, the cultural difference in pushing this uh, transformation uh, uh, journey? I think we have to go back to the, uh, the core of what does how do we define uh, this program as a, a transformation program? Digit digital transformation is not a small improvement that you're trying to make. By itself, the definition is a, 
a quantum, you're trying to do a radical change to achieve a quantum leap, not just a little bit, but a quantum leap uh, to, to the way the business is, uh, of course, operating as well as, of course, uh, revenue to, to most of the businesses. So in that context, the change itself is tremendous. You're not, not going to have a little bit of change. You're going to have huge change in a lot of perspective from the business strategy point of view, uh, as well as how the entire organization has to change in order to support this initiative. So when you have a project of such a nature, you can imagine that uh, there will be a lot of resistance uh, coming from the business and why should we do this and, and so and so forth. So uh, that is something I think I'm pretty certain that a lot of businesses will face. Whether are you in this industry or are you from another industry, if you insert change, uh, you should not come to a surprise for you that uh, you will encounter all this. And perhaps one of the things that, uh, uh, if you remember what we presented, was focusing on the fundamental reason why change, first of all, was needed. We have things like uh, huge competition. We have uh, uh, stagnant growth for quite some time. And you know some of these are some of your anchor point to how you should remain focused. And today, now, does this kind of conditions change? Uh, is it the same or has it evolved to, to, to something? If it's the same, then perhaps then uh, the emphasis then uh, uh, should, should be there. Uh, the other thing that what you could possibly do is that any proposal remains a proposition until it's tested. Yeah. So one of the strategies that we took is to start small, fail fast and fail forward. Frankly speaking, none of us would be certain whether or not this particular strategy is going to work out or, or not. Uh, but if you do experimentations to a certain degree, you have a certain degree of confidence that you can say that by doing this, we can be relatively certain that uh, take on this uh, approach, we, we would be then successful. Yeah. Right. So there's a, there's a very interesting point, right? Start small, scale. Uh, go big. Important thing is uh, getting the uh, tires to hit the road so that people can see results and uh, outcome. Okay, so I have a few questions. Uh, you know, um, our um, audience asking about the program itself. Um, maybe I can just uh, direct to uh, three of you since you came out from the, <laughs> the uh, uh, graduated from your program, right? It, how how tough is the the master's program, and uh, how much time? I, I guess this question is about how tough is it to manage uh, work and at the same time because all of us are working uh, professionals to to manage the rigor of the program the the alongside with uh, with work. So maybe uh, Alfred. Yep. Uh, yeah. Thanks, uh, Chi Chong. I'll take the question. Uh, just just to share, this is uh, coming. Uh, from me, uh, from my personal experience, so I, I think um, the to sum it up is I would I would say that is uh, rigorous but rewarding. Okay, so um, let me expand on that. Um, rigorous, rigorous in the sense that um, definitely you need to invest uh, a lot of time and effort into the, um, the assignments, the the, the seem seemingly endless assignments, uh, the readings. Uh, and of course, the, the the major one or the mega one is the capstone uh, project. Um, and to to do all these, uh, of course, uh, time time management is uh, essential, right? Uh, you have to make sure that you are able to manage your time and, and stuff like that. But I think another aspect of it is also um, before embarking on a course that that mental state, uh, your self mental state, and also your family mental state. I think you have to. Uh, hash it out with your family, gaining their support and understanding. And along the way, uh, you know, if anything crops up, you know, some emergencies, how are you going to deal with it? These are some of like, sort of like risk management that you have to think about. Um, and I think uh, to, what, in one way, uh, what I did uh, personally, how I uh, kind of alleviate some of this uh, pain or grind, you know, the constant grind over two years, is that I try to find the confluence between this course, uh, what I pick up, what I learn from this course with my work. So 
uh, is when if you manage to do that, you know, kind of find that confluence uh, and, and alignment, and how you can learn and apply in your work at the same time, then actually you will be able to see some of the rewards, the results, uh, positive results. And if you, you will feel um, uh, like you're doing two two different things, uh, completely two different contexts. You know, you're doing kind of the same thing, and you are also uh, uh, benefiting from what you're what you're learn what you're learning from this uh, program. So I, I would say that this is uh, one of the way I cope. Uh, you know, with uh, you know, in, when as I juggle my this program, this two year program, very intensive, rigorous program, as well as my uh, work commitments and obligations. So this is how I approach it. Okay, and and we know that on some of the. Uh, our participants uh, do change jobs, right? Because it's a two-year program. We see people seeking out uh, greener pastures and so forth. Uh, so I know uh, Alex uh, change jobs. So uh, maybe you want to, is there something you can share while, while you go through that? How do you at the same time cope with a new, new uh, position and uh, also with the, the program? Um, okay. I would say it's not easy changing job in the middle of the changing job your your job in the middle of the course. Um, reason being because first of all you need to juggle between uh, having a new job role, do new job scope, understanding what is required, what need to be done, and at the same time fulfilling your academic um, uh, modules and assignments. It's not going to be easy. I have to be honest with you. Uh, I myself spend a considerable amount of time juggling them both. But at the end of the day, um, like what Alfred had mentioned earlier, it's all about time management. So um, some, some uh, element of sacrifices is required, especially if you have family, kids and all. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, you can still do it if you put in enough effort. Um, so yeah, having said that, so if you put in effort, anything can be done. So uh, yeah, so yeah. Okay, everything can be done. Okay, I, I try to ask, answer a few questions uh, uh, that, that is raised uh, pertaining to the uh, program. Uh, there are two questions asked whether is this program suited for someone uh, with uh, technology, IT uh, work experience. Um, in fact, uh, 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 we, we do see a good number of our participants who are from non-IT uh, compute, IT computing and engineering background. Okay, so we do have uh, one third of the class whose background is from the business, from e-commerce, uh, bankers, you know, marketeers, HR. So it's certainly not a program that's meant for IT because we're really training uh, digital leaders. And digital leaders, as we know today, can come from um, any parts of the organization, right? It doesn't necessarily need to be someone from IT. Uh, you can be from HR, you can be from operations and marketing. That is where we're trying to fill the gap, trying to develop people to become digital leaders who can lead change and transformation for the business, for the organization. Um, there's a question about EDB releasing the Siri framework and what is the view on the digital maturity model in context of digital transformation. So the Siri framework, if I understand, is somewhat uh, created more for the um, um, manufacturing uh, industry. Uh, so certainly, you know, if you are uh, building a, a smart uh, uh, production, uh, operations, uh, uh, set up, uh, the Siri framework will be quite useful because it will tell you the, the, frame, the, the practices and what to think about. Whereas the digital transformation the framework that this course tries to go through is something we feel will be fairly portable, fairly generic across different industries, including manufacturing, okay, the services, uh, the government, and so forth. Okay, so we're trying to teach something, hopefully, that is a lot more generic, a lot more applicable across uh, all the industry. As I mentioned, uh, all industry sectors and all businesses are trying to become digital. So we need to, to really cover something that is applicable to as many uh, industry sectors as, as, as we can. Okay. 
Okay, a uh, uh, question on prototyping. I think we did mention a bit of prototyping. Um, how, how do we uh, test uh, the prototypes and how will the users engage to move the project forward, making sure that it is in the, in the right direction? I think it's best answered by Jacob. Uh, <laughs> Yes, in, in the prototyping phase, uh, one of the most uh, important questions that we ask ourselves is how would be the adoption rate? Uh, we went down to even very fundamental questions as in would, would, would people actually buy online uh, coming from a brick and mortar uh, uh, setting that we have, a business model that we have. So, Obviously, if we start to build a, a full program or app or things like that, then uh, it's going to be far too long for us to realize this result and probably it might get even very expensive. So in this sense, then you have to do a little bit of innovation uh, to try to test the idea out using uh, certain ideas. For example, in this case, we uh, try to sell this online and uh, see if people would actually prove the point that people would actually just buy needles online and there we were pretty surprised and uh, uh, quite happy with the results that um, people actually uh, buy uh, needles online so in, in that sense uh, that, that's how we approach some of the uh, I, uh, ideas when it comes to prototyping and on top of this of course uh, as what Alex has mentioned, how we discovered that we were way off track was uh, we used low, uh, or I would say mid-fidelity prototypes. Uh, it's not a full functional app, but it's, it's a mock-up at, at how it, it uh, shows up uh, in, the, in the app itself. And users themselves, will then we, we run through this with the users to see if they could understand this and they, they would actually relate to it. And we actually discovered that uh, there was quite a lot of uh, <laughs> assumptions we made that we thought it was straightforward, but the, the people actually don't don't really uh, get that particular function. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I think we may just have one time for one more question. Uh, maybe I will just take Samuel's question. Comparing the before and after, what is one thing that you have gained the most from the program? Would you consider moving on to PhD and uh, what's next? Uh, so can I invite uh, Alex maybe to share uh, one thing uh, compared before after you know one thing that uh, you gain most? Okay, interestingly, through throughout these two years, I have learned a lot of uh, way on how to suss out way of sussing out data or information from various stakeholders. Uh, I like the part where we learn how to manage our stakeholders. Previously, prior to this course, I have no idea how to manage my stakeholders properly. Um, I just thought that we just going to directly to them, I'll get what I want and stuff like that. But a lot of times it, end up that it, it ends up to a point where they don't understand what I want from them and why do I want to get out from them? Uh, what do I want to get out from them? So throughout this course, uh, there's one part where we learn how to manage our stakeholders. I realized that if we speak the same lingo as them, the language as them, it's easier to get them on your side to, be, to, 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 to sing the same thing as you. So in the long run, regardless whether I change my career or my previous job, uh, this module, this particular management uh, uh, module actually brings, allows me to interact better with my upper management to a point where it's easy to, to strike a conversation, and easy to understand why they are doing things like this and how I can make them change their, 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 their initial decision to something that where I feel more relevant in the future. Um, so this is something that I think it's, uh, I have benefited a lot. Uh, whether we will do a PhD, um, for now I'm not too sure. I, wouldn't, I, I don't want to speculate. Um, I, I just came out from the, uh, the, the, the rigorous, rigorous uh, timetable. I want to enjoy a bit. Uh, maybe my two classmates can help to, 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 to wait okay. in. So stakeholder management, one key takeaway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, I think um, on, on the point um, on uh, what's next, right? I, I think the, the, the cross of the question, I think for, for me, um, after the course, I can, I, 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 um, the, 
I can really sense and feel that I feel empowered by all the um, digital skills and knowledge that I've acquired through this course. And after acquiring, I think the first thing that comes to my mind is that, um, again, it's something like, uh, maybe you can call it like a, to validate, right? Uh, the skills and, and, and capabilities that I've acquired uh, is to actually apply them, right? So, so I actually applying it in my job right now, uh, driving um, um, uh, digitalization uh, strategies, uh, initiatives um, leading that effort. So, and and all these, uh, I can I can um, personally uh, I can vouch. And if you have any doubt, uh, there is uh, I can assure you that definitely this uh, program has empowered me, strengthened my confidence in leading digital in my organization. So this is the immediate thing that I would do after this course. Uh, PhD is something uh, maybe down the road, not, not, not be considered uh, at the moment. Uh, so the, the main thing right now is uh, to, building, to, to grow my career, to build up my, uh, strengthen my career. Yep. Okay, that's very nice to hear, right? Because mm -hmm. we teach tons of uh, framework and yes. uh, tools. Right. So it's good to hear that uh, you're able to apply and yes. uh, make, exactly. make good use of those uh, that you've learned to your, to your, to your work. Yep. Uh, Jacob. I think for me, uh, what is really uh, standing out uh, more for me was, apart from, of course, the knowledge and, and uh, frameworks that you are uh, being taught in class, uh, what this course really does is that it will widen your perspective uh, uh, a lot uh, compared to what uh, you, you basically know in the past. And these skills uh, as, as well will enable you to... Uh, I think lead, lead, lead to something really useful when you are in your digital transformation journey. Uh, so, so that's one uh, perspective. The other uh, thing that I think I gain most is that uh, you, throughout this course, you, you actually also uh, embark on a journey to understand yourselves, uh, what are your you know, strengths and your weaknesses. Some of the things that I thought I knew in the past became, uh, uh, I have to relearn them. So that's a process of learning. And this learning itself, I think, is a, is, is a lifelong thing that you discover more for yourself. And when you reach the stage whereby you know more about yourself, I think you can then decide better on what kind of uh, uh, perhaps career path or, or specialization uh, you would uh, want to go. Okay, I think that's all the time we have. We have some questions that we couldn't uh, take. Maybe we will try to answer them uh, offline. I hope the session has been useful uh, and thanks again to my guests. Very appreciate your time and support coming back to uh, do your uh, sharing with all of us. Thank you so much.